in 1982-83, that is N. T. Rama Rao in on the pages of Inado newspaper, when N. T. Rama Rao entered politics, the newspapers, including Inado, played a major role in presenting him as a certain kind of figure, as of course a great leader figure, but also a certain kind of performer who is now, I mean, a certain kind of leader who is very close to the people, right? Uh, that's uh, so. One of the things that happened in that campaign is that anything that NTR did was newsworthy. And that was achieved by, uh, you know, not necessarily because of uh, editorial policy, even newspapers which were opposed to uh, uh, Telugu Desam Party politically, they too were carrying out pictures like this, not, not as dramatic as this one, but uh, pictures of him, you know, eating streets, uh, roadside food, for example. Um, because it, it seemed to have made a, a good kind of story. Okay, you never saw politicians do this in, in those days. You never saw politicians go out into the people, you know, in, in such a, such a, um, uh, uh, such a, such a what, what can I say, such a simple fashion, such a dramatic fashion, such a performative fashion, a fashion all of that. Now, here is, a, a, you know, a, a, a reverse of that when, a, a yatra, a, 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 you know, a, a procession, a long procession that was carried out by Y.S. Raj Shikharadi is filmed in order that that becomes part of, uh, you know, a new campaign. And what has changed is that here is the story of a politician, whereas there was a, you know, a film star trying to enter politics. So I, I, I'm just using these two moments to clearly demarcate, even in the Andhra. Telugu scene, even in the, as far as Telugu film industry, Telugu cinema, Telugu politics, Andhra politics is concerned, there is this sea change that's happening. And moving further, moving into the other aspects of these biopics, there was, if you've seen any of them or if you've seen all of them, you notice that there was absolutely no, no, uh, you know, no, no fear of uh, reprimand, I mean, of course not in reprimand, there was, there, there seemed to be complete, you know, lack of concern, complete, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, um, yeah, okay, let's put it like this. Now, I said unabashed on the slide and I'll, I'll repeat that. There's no qualms about giving us alternative facts, right? Now, what kind of alternative facts are we talking about? There, are, there, were, there was a two-part biopic on N.T. Ramarao both of which conveniently censored out the controversial marriage, I mean, second marriage of the actor and then the falling out of the family over this, uh, the breakup of the family over this, the breaking up of the, of the, the party, Telugu Desam, over this, and uh, the supposedly um, uh, um, not so good role that Chandrababu Naidu played in all of this. That's completely kept out of the picture. Now, the... Uh, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi biopic has the, the, ca the character um, tell the wife to be that he does not want to marry her and he seeks her, you know, he seeks her uh, uh, forgiveness and the marriage does not take place. Now it's very widely known that, that he was married, widely reported and yet the film chooses to completely deny that by presenting us with a very different version of what happened. And Mind you, there is no attempt to fictionalize it. It is in fact called the, you know, it is named after the uh, Prime Minister. So, what, what do we make of this, you know, this complete lack of concern to facts, to, to, uh, to detail that everybody knows? Second is the use of controversy as a, as, as a publicity, uh, um, uh, uh, as a generator of publicity. And here is a report that suggests that the controversy around the film is expected to earn the film money. Now, it, you know, I, I would even suggest that the, the, the revenues earned by the film are not the reasons why we should be paying attention to it. The reason I, why I think it's important is because it was supposed to serve a certain role in the election. It could not, it, it did not, it was not released before the election, but that's not the point. The point is that it was meant to be released during the election, it, uh, and it was not. The Telugu film Yatra was released before the election. It was used as a campaign uh, tool. 
it was shown to uh, um, you know potential voters uh, free of cost uh, there were reports that uh, voters were all i mean uh, people who came to watch it were also given free snacks and so on so this on the other hand was not shown nevertheless it was meant to be shown so what what are we making of this we are looking at a certain you know a certain kind of media uh, uh, environment in which controversy too is good is, is publicity and all publicity is good publicity okay and and the fact that you don't have to worry about facts you don't have to worry about detail okay so um, how we, we can explain it we can understand it in terms of the fact that there is a certain environment in which repetition of certain certain uh, you know uh, non truths can over the period of time acquire a certain uh, you know a, a solidity but more than that i think we're looking at consistency in terms of representation that all representations will be consistent with each other and they're basically referring to each other so this is stuff that's been talked about in other contexts but i want us to come back to the fact that we have to go beyond surprise and shock oh my god they're not telling the truth of course they're not going to tell the truth they're political biopics they're meant to be campaign vehicles okay now it is in the domain of entertainment it's not about fact versus fiction we don't have to worry about i mean uh, wearing another hat i have to worry about whether it's a fact or not but as someone who studies entertainment i don't have to worry about you know the 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 factual details in it entertainment is not about fact it's about fiction it's about narratives okay then the the strategies that are used here in content creation is what is important here the way in which people are built the way in which characters are built the way in which leaders can be built in these films is what i would be paying attention to coming via fandom coming via somebody who studies film stars somebody who's interested in celebrities and how they work okay now what else do we learn from fandom we also learned that there is anger there is disappointment there is opposition to things that fans i mean the icons do that's rajnikanth himself and this is a report from uh, from a website which suggests that rajnikanth fans were not particularly happy with the particular uh, not happy with the film that was released and looking at instances like this we have madhav prasad who in his books in a politics suggests that you know fandom is not simply about bhakti he he talks about fan bhakti so it is not about bhakti or even if you want to think about it as bhakti bhakti of the fan kind is really about sovereignty is really about the ordinary people expressing their political agency okay bringing forward bringing forth their sovereignty their independence their autonomy and star power he says is not something that flows from above it's not the consequence of a certain number of tweets or a certain number of media you know a certain number of messages that are you know uh, that bombard us but it is something that comes from below it is it is uh, something that is given to uh, a, uh, um, uh, an idol given to a leader or given to a star and so on so when you look at the when you look at the flow in this manner it's not somebody who is manipulating us from above but it is something that we donate or or you know we we endow to someone uh, uh, whom we trust to represent us someone who we trust will be a good leader and so on then we have another set of problems on hand we we are no longer talking about manipulation but something much more complex 